just to show you some of the favorite rocks I have lying around the house. Stitch this. That was my friend Sam showing you some of his favorite rocks. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite rocks. These two rocks are both from the same place, the Paula mine in California. So let's look at this one first because this is my all time favorite rock. Look at that. So there's lots of pink tourmaline in this rock. See, I'm, they're just all throughout it. And see the sparkly stuff that they're in? That's called lipidolite. So that lipidolite is actually a lithium rich type of mica. Super, super cool rock. Now this is another type of tourmaline. This is black tourmaline. You can see it's been broken in a couple of places. There's actually a couple of other chunks of black tourmaline in here. And then you can see all of this beautiful muscovite, all of that muscovite reflecting back at you. So muscovite is another type of mica, sort of like lipidolite with a slightly different chemical formula. All right, lots of other cool rocks. Oh, I love this one so much. This is gypsum. And uh, my friend Matt Jungers brought this back from the Atacama Desert for me. So this is an evaporite rock, which means that uh, these minerals, this mineral used to be dissolved in water. And then when the water evaporated, it left this behind. You can actually see the layers in that. Isn't this so pretty? So this is an evaporite rock. And let's see, I have another rock that talks about, it doesn't talk, it talks to me. I can sort of read the rocks. That's the cool thing about being a geologist. But this is a really cool rock because it tells a real story. So let's look at that. Do you see those shells in there? There's a shell, there's a shell. Let me turn this over. There's a lot of different shells in here. See, there's an outline of a shell. So this is a phospholiferous limestone that I found on the side of the road in West Virginia. And I really like it because I can learn something about the way that this rock was positioned as it was forming, right? So, and the story is inside of these shells. So let's look carefully at this big shell right here. See how the top part looks like it's sand or mud and then the bottom part? Can you see that that's like crystals? Looks different. And you can see it on this little one right here too. See, it's like greeny on the top and then it's like crystals on the bottom, almost kind of clear looking. So imagine that you have a bottle of water and you scoop up some sand or some sediment, some mud, whatever, and you put the top on and you shake the bottle. Eventually that sand and mud is gonna settle out. It's gonna settle onto the bottom because it's a little bit heavier and then there'll be water left at the top. So that's what happened here. When this rock was forming, it was actually this way. And I know that because see the sand in the bottom or the mud, the sediment has settled out onto the bottom. So the shell fell onto the bottom of the ocean, the sediment settled out and there was water left on the top. And just like when we saw the um, gypsum, you know, the, the mineral was dissolved in the water. There was a mineral dissolved in this water too, and it was limestone calcium carbonate. And so when that water evaporated, it left those minerals behind and they filled up the tops of all the shells. So we know that this was the, the top and this was sort of the bottom. Let's see what else. Oh, this is a really cool rock. I collected this one in California and then uh, one of my professors actually cut it and polished it for me because it was such a neat specimen. So these are onchoids and this is another example of ancient life. So inside of each one of these things is a little shell or a piece of rock. And then the circles outside, these different pieces outside, which are the actual onchoids, those are some kind of life, algal mats, cyanobacteria, something like that, that formed these kind of mats. Isn't that cool? So all different rocks tell a story. And we're sort of geologic detectives, as corny as that sounds. It's like each one of these is a little time capsule and they're, are hints and clues in here. And once you learn how to read the rocks, you can actually learn a whole lot about the history of the earth. So rocks are really cool.